Hello friends, it's Cindy Brumbaugh from CindyLeeBDesigns.com, independent stamping up demonstrator. I got this beautiful swap from my friend Carla Hess um, back when this paper from the last annual catalog, and it was made with the still current prized peony stamp set with the peony dies. And this paper is retired now, but you might still have some of it. But I was so taken by this card and I have had it sitting in my little box on my desk and I decided I'm going to tackle how exactly that was done. I'm not sure if Carla had found um, a template somewhere, but this was the card that she had um, swapped with me. So I'm gonna show you how to make this card using a new stamp set that we have in the annual catalog. I mean, in the January through June mini catalog, and that's the Honey Bee Home that comes with the Honey Bee Home stamp set with these pretty flowers in it and these little bees. And it also has the Honeycomb Blooms, Honeycomb Blooms dies. And it has some of these solid dies and then dies that cut out the images that you stamp. So we're gonna be using this to make um, a card that is cased practically from Carla's card. Okay, so we're gonna set this aside. So the first thing I did when I was casing this card is I measured out the designer series paper and I found out that Carla went four inches and scored. First she started out with five and a quarter. Okay, so I knew it was five and a quarter and then I took four and then three, that made seven and that made another three, made 10 and then one and three quarters made 11 and three quarters. So. I cut myself a piece of a template here. Some of you guys will remember this from a pattern stack years and years ago. I still have tons of this paper and I love it. I love a non-directional paper. A non-directional paper means whichever way you turn it, you don't have to worry about which way it's folded. So what I did is I realized that this had to be four, seven, and 10 okay, on the 11 and three quarter inch side. Now don't worry about writing down the measurements. They're all on my blog. Um, underneath the YouTube description, you'll see visit my blog here, press that link, takes you right over to cindyleebdesigns.com. Additional photos, products I used will be over there, but also underneath the YouTube description, you can find the products I used and the measurements. Okay, so five and a quarter by 11 and three quarters. You score at four, seven, and 10. Okay, now with this paper, you can see if you want the stripes to be the part that you see the most of, you just leave the stripes there. You fold this way, back this way, this way. Stripe, stripe, flower. Now, if you wanted it to be the other way, you would just go flower, flower, stripe. So it doesn't matter which way you fold this because it's non directional. So what I did is I looked at my honeybee and I love the paper that goes with this heart and home heart and home yes um, but maybe I'm wrong I'm not sure I don't have a piece laying here um, but I liked the paper that was in the annual catalog the hand penned paper that came with the hand pen petals now look at all of these beautiful wildflower images here in all these bright colors. So I decided to pair this paper, and another reason why I picked this paper is look at all the patterns here. You've got floral patterns on this side, but when you turn over the paper, it's got more um, one color, so that when you fold the paper, it looks really pretty seeing both sides of it. It's not like this side is navy blue, checks and this is floral and it doesn't match. So all of these papers in one way or another, um, they all, even this one had the floral, it still looks pretty against that one. So this is a great paper to use, um, the hand penned in the annual catalog to use for the, um, for this type of a card because you're gonna see these two papers pair well together, but sometimes you'll find a paper that the, the patterns just really don't go well together. So I'm gonna use the hand pen petals. So I found this one pattern in there that I really liked. And as you can see, it kind of looks like wildflowers here, um, like this in this pattern here in the hand pen petals. So what I did is I took and I put my paper into my trimmer, okay? So I took this piece of paper and I opened up my trimmer 
and I went ahead and went to four and I scored. Then I went to seven and I scored. Then I went to 10 and I scored, okay? So that's how I did it. I was thinking I need four, seven, 10, and I scored my paper. And then I decided, oh, I want my flowers to be the part that you see the most of. So I said, flowers, fold, fold, fold. But look what happened. I ended up putting my paper in upside down. So that would have meant I would have to do this to make my flowers be going the right direction, except for I wanted to show more flowers. Now I could have easily done this, that is actually very pretty, but I wanted more of a floral pattern. So I decided I would have to make my card this way and to open this way. Whereas Carla's opens this way, pulling it to the left, but I decided I'm gonna have to pull to the right. Okay, so we've got our piece of paper um, scored and folded. So I'm gonna show you how to put this together. Your base of your card is four and a quarter by five and a half. So that's a quarter sheet of our cardstock, four and a quarter by five and a half. And then you're just going to be putting this right on to the back. Now that's going to give it um, stability whenever you sit it up. Now one thing is I have a, um, I love borders around cards, but sometimes when they, this leans a little bit, I would like to actually see about making this five and a half and just having the border here, but the designer paper goes the whole way to the bottom. So maybe I'll do that on a card. Okay, so we're going to put adhesive over here and I think we're gonna go ahead and use our Tombow, okay? So remember, we're kind of making this card the opposite way opening. It's going to open from the right side, okay? Because I made my directional paper the wrong way. But the next card we're gonna make, I'm gonna do it a little different, and I'm gonna show you some other things with the honeybee. Okay, so that opens this way, okay? And I saw that Carla had this really great um, die here from the ornate layers. So where did I put that one? Oh, here it is. Huh. It's this die here from the ornate layers dies. And so what I did is I went ahead, we'll just put um, Carlos there. I went ahead and put that, um, is gonna go on the inside here. Isn't that pretty, that garden green? And I want it so that it, I see the little dots right there. And then it's over a little bit, but you can also kind of, um, if you close your card, if you put it right in the middle and close it, the only thing is, is you're gonna be putting, you're gonna be putting this on the inside. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, as you can see, I pulled some cinnamon cider. I just stamped one of the little bees from the honey bee, one of these little bees. And then I just put, a, I brought in a little cinnamon cider and the miss you right there. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put that. As you can see, I stamped it one time and I liked it better on the top because the bee looked better on the bottom. So we're gonna put that right in the middle and that's the stitched rectangle die. And it kind of just fits right in those little circles around the edge. And I do see that I have a little circle still in there. I hope I don't have that backwards. Nope, it's the right way. Okay, so I kind of like to play around with that because you can have the white showing. I think it looks okay. What do you think? But then if you write over here, you're going to see it. So it's gonna be a little bit off. It's not going to be perfectly on the inside because you want it to, you don't want it to, um, you're gonna have a little wiggle room. You wanna cover the white with the, when you fold over the card. Okay, we want to have the white not showing in case we end up writing a message and you somehow goes over. So just line up 
that so that you just barely see the white. Okay. All right. So there's the inside. And your eye, when it opens it up, it doesn't see because you can't really see the fold here when you open it. It just looks like it's part of the card. So it just closes that way. And then Carla had adhered down this piece. So I'm going to adhere down this piece. There we go. I like this little strip that she put here to break up that, but I love this green here, this um, beautiful green here. So I just left it like that. Okay, so then we needed a focal point here. And my focal point was these beautiful little flowers here. And I know you wouldn't think of like, you know, doing the cinnamon cider, but look at these flowers in here. So I put this on here, but then I thought it needed a border. So then I just pulled out my layering. Now these stitched shapes are retired, but I'm sure a lot of you still have them, but you can use your layering circles. I just like the stitching because it just adds a little oomph there. And then you just take your next scallop that goes up bigger than your oval. So like I said, if you don't have the stitched ovals, just use your regular ovals or use a circle, use a square, use a rectangle, use a label. You can use anything. And then you're going to put that right on the front there. And because it has a bit of layers on it, I'm not gonna pop it up, but I'm going to put that as the focal point on that. And I am going to, my eye wants to put that right along the line here, except for I wanna have it about the same on that side. But it really doesn't matter where you put it, it's up to you, but I'm kind of putting it so it has about the same on the left and the right and the top and the bottom. Okay, so I really like the fact that I could take the mint macaron and put it on the leaves and put the cinnamon cider, the lighter one, um, to pull out the cinnamon cider and the flowers. So you can see here, this is a paper that was in the annual catalog, but yet these floral images really went nice with that. Okay, then I wanted to put a sentiment on here, but I didn't want to cover up the flowers. So I pulled out yet another stamp set, and that stamp set I have here too. And that is another great one that's in the annual catalog, The Quiet Meadow. Also has wildflowers in it. It has great long wildflower solid dyes. So this little love was so cute. I stamped it, and there's a tiny little die that cuts out the love and I put some dimensionals on the back of it, and I thought this would be a perfect sentiment on the front here, just down towards the bottom, or you could do it, uh, I don't know, maybe you do it right from the, the top there, I don't know, where, where is the best way? I don't know, I kind of think down here at the bottom. But there's a little uh, circle here. You could put twine through there, a little tiny piece of ribbon, but it is a little fiddly there. So what I did is I put, I know I have some dimension, um, blue dots here. I went ahead and used my little bee. So I just pulled out my glue dots and I put a glue dot on the back of the bee, pulled that off, and then I just decided to put that little bee right on the tag, and it just gave a, um, some oomph to our card there. And we have this really cute card. You can write a message in here, and you're getting to use both sides of that beautiful paper. So I intended to make this card opening from the left, but ended up opening from the right because I didn't pay attention to the way I did my paper. So, but I still want to make this one. So what I'm gonna do is show you something else that's in the Honey Bee Home. So we've used stamps, stamps, and stamps here. Now, we're gonna make another card using the same paper. So we're gonna have the same measurements, but we are going to make sure that I'm going to fold it the right way because I want to have it open. Now I'm kind of used to it opening on this side over this way. So if I want it to open this way, I want the flowers over here. So what I'm gonna do is know that I wanna put the four here. I wanna fold it this way and go back this way, right? Because I want it to open from this side. So it's a little bit of thinking here. So I decided it was easier for me to use my, use my um, 
scoring tool. And I wanted to do the four, seven, ten, but that goes this way. So what I had to do is turn my paper upside down, thinking that this was gonna be the way it's gonna fold, right? It's gonna fold this way and then over. So I had to turn it upside down and score it. So just when you're looking at your paper, if it's directional and it has to go a certain direction, you need to think if you have to turn it upside down or which way. So hopefully I'm, st I'm doing this right. Okay, because this, I want this to be here and I want it to open from this side. So I'm gonna turn it upside down. I'm still gonna use those same measurements and I'm gonna score it four, seven, and 10. And remember that was 11 and three quarters. I just took a little quarter inch off of my 12 inch paper and it's five and a quarter. Okay, but I love my scoring tool. Okay, so now as you can see, I have my paper going the right way now. So now I can fold it this way and I have my bone folder here. And I now am gonna open my card from the direction I wanted it to open. It's gonna open this way, okay? And see the little difference there? See how it's gonna open a different way? Okay, so what I should have done is I should have actually did it, let me see if I can show you this way. If you, I just like the flowers better. I mean, let's just say it was folded the other way. Let's just fold it this way. But we're not doing it this way because the direction's the wrong way. But just see, that's just too much of the stripe, I think. Um, okay, so we're back to the way we're supposed to be. Da 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 da. Okay, this is just a review here. Now we're putting our paper onto our card base. And believe me, I'm not just caught, I'm not just reviewing this all for you. I'm going to show you another great thing in that honeybee bundle. So here, we're just going to put that onto our get up on my tippy tip toes. Get a nice one eighth inch border the whole way around. Okay, got a little piece of paper there. Okay, now it's going to open this way. Okay, so we're going to glue down this flap here. And before you glue down that flap, if you do want to put like a piece of ribbon around there, that could be pretty. But I just decided to put it down. Okay, so on this one, we're going to do that same thing. Oh my gosh, you know what? I ran this through, but I didn't Oh golly, I didn't take all these little pieces out. I ran it through, not thinking. So I'll show you some little tricks here. So if you kind of run your poker through there. But I do have to get this actually um, done because it's part of the card. Okay, so let's just get those little, sometimes I can just run them through there and they just fall right out. Yes, you could use your your um, dye brush, that would have been a good idea, except for I had, I had run it through and didn't think of that. So we'll just have a little chat session here. Think of all the designer paper you have that we tend to hoard, it's so pretty, and we don't wanna cut into it. And then finally, I just say, I've gotta cut into this. That's why I have it, right? That is why I have it. I remember I had, um, I got a little Timex watch when I was in like fifth grade. And all I wanted was this watch and my mom got me the watch. I had to work my little tail off to get that, a lot of dishes and dusting and stuff. But I got this little watch and then my mom asked me why I wasn't wearing it. And I said, well, I'm afraid I'm gonna lose it. And she goes, well, you worked so hard for it and you wanted it, but you're not using it. I often think about that with designer series paper. I love the paper, I get the paper, and then I tend to just hoard it because <laughs> it's so pretty. I just like to collect it. Um, but let's get out and use it. Okay, so we'll get all these little filigrees out of here and these little doody doos. Okay, we're almost done. I'm so sorry, kids. Didn't mean to bore you um, taking these little dots out of here, but I really do have to put the card together for you 
And if I don't take the little dots out, we're gonna, um, and wouldn't you know, they're all, all of these are coming out really nicely for me. But if you ever do find one that just isn't poking the whole way through, if you take your pierce mat, say you have one that's not coming through. If you take your pierce mat and push down into the pierce mat, it very it comes out so much, especially like these little filigrees here. Like if you press on these, like you might be doing it up in the air and they're not coming out, but if you put them on here and press onto the foam, we do that at class all the time with our little rubber mats that we have and it um, helps them to come out. So let's get that, okay. I think we're done. Okay, get that little do that out. Believe me, these ornate layers are totally worth all of the time it takes. Okay, come on, little filigree, get out of there, little curly cue. Okay, now almost done. Do we have them all? Oh, well, there's a little guy down there. Yes, I do suggest using your dye brush while it's still in the dye. Okay, let's get this. I can believe if I drop one little tiny one of these things and I carry it on the bottom of my shoe in the house, my little granddaughter, who's one year old now, will find that little dot with her little tiny fingers. It's so cute. Okay, so, all right. Okay, now it's tomorrow morning. I hope you guys had a nice night's rest. <laughs> um, we're gonna put that on here, right? but I shouldn't have done that yet because I wanna put the white on and what I did with the white here, it goes on this side, of course. We're gonna do these, this a little bit backwards. Um, now, which side's the good side, Cindy? Bad side. I should have put this on first. Okay. Oh my, 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 my. That goes right in the middle, the rectangle, making sure we have all our little circles bordering it. And there we go. And then we're gonna put that, like I said, again, right there so that we see none of the white. And we'll put that down. And when I put that white down, I could find any little dot that didn't come through. There we go. Okay. All right. Now, the fun part here. I decided to use a tag on here. So I used, oh, another one of my favorite dies, the Tailor Made Tags dies that layer um, inside each other. I decided that it would be cute to put a tag on here. Okay, so before I put the tag on though, I'm gonna decorate this tag using some of the dyes that are in the Honey Bee, Honey Bee Blooms. Where are they? Here we go. So the Honey Bee Blooms dyes has these three solid dyes here. So I took the colors that were in here, Pool Party, Cinnamon Cider, and Garden Green, and I die cut these solid dies and look how pretty they are okay and so what I want to do is just build up kind of an image on here with my dies so we're gonna put a little glue on here okay I decided to put the green down first that nice dark green against the white and then we have the cinnamon cider. I can get out my craft mat here. Put this down. Make sure that we're in the camera shot here. Just put a little glue on here. Okay. And we'll put some cinnamon cider there. And then some pretty contrast with the pool party, this lighter pool party. There we 
there we go. So, you know, the other card, we did a stamped image from the Honey Bee home. And this time we're using the Look how pretty. Now, you might see that looks kind of goofy. So we're gonna cover up the sentiment here on this card. So I'm gonna pop this onto here. Okay. And I'm going to, should I put, no, I'm not gonna put dimensionals on it. I'm just gonna glue it flat with my Tombow Multipurpose. And I'm gonna stick that right with about the same amount of designer series peeking through on the top and the two sides. Making sure I have it nice and straight because glue ha has to be strong. We put down there, right? So I'm gonna take some dimensionals and I used, again, I went back to the Quiet Meadows. I liked this thinking of you here and I went to those Quiet Meadows dies. And like I said, it's really nice because the Quiet Meadow looks really nice with the Honey Bee Home. So I'm using the dies, but I'm using these dies. Now these dies are a little bit longer. Now look how pretty actually these Quiet Meadows dies looks really pretty with the hand pen. So you are, we're really having a lot of coordination and mixing and matching on this um, card. So what I did is I stamped this in the cinnamon cider and I'm gonna put that across there. So I'm gonna put a dimensional on each of the sides. I'm not gonna put one in the middle because it has the bulk of the three die cuts there. So I'm just gonna pop that right in the middle there. And I considered putting um, also some twine or ribbon through here, but I thought, what about a bee? So, I have this little bee, but I just realized my bees are over here. Not far away. So I got out my little bumblebee trinkets, also in the annual catalog. Love them, you get 24 in that pack. So take, and I'm thinking of just putting a little bee up there. And I'm not sure that he has to go straight up, I think he can go, let me see which way should, before I put glue. Just kind of put him going in a, not like straight up, but like he could be coming in that direction. He could go any way he wants, because he's a bee. And bees get to do what they want, right? We need to get out of their way. So what do you say? Should I? There we go. Okay, so now we have two cards. Now this one opens the way Carl is opened. This one opens the other way. So you can do it either way. It depends on what you would do. I was just forced into doing this one this way because I didn't pay attention to the direction of my paper. So two cards using the Bumble Honey Bee Home. I used the stamps. Oh, and I wanna put, I wanna stamp on the inside of here. I wanna take some cinnamon cider. I just made myself a cinnamon cider. If you um, don't have a paper pumpkin yet spot that comes exclusive to our paper pumpkins, um, I made my own spot. I just took my cinnamon cider re-inker and then I used our ink spots. You can get those in a package of five in the annual catalog. So what I did is I just made myself one. I like to use the spots for like really delicate fonts and a lot of times when I'm using my Stamparatus. So I'm just inking this up in Cinnamon Cider. And then I this says, um, stay wonderful. So thinking of you, and then you're gonna tell your friend to stay wonderful. And I kind of like the fact that these fonts are a little different, but they actually go well together. It's, they kind of, um, even in here, like you have the fonts that are mixed in here, not that this one is mixed, but it does go pretty together. So you've got those two different cards and that all came from the swap from my friend, Carla Hess. Thank you, Carla. And so I ended up making two of these. Simply take a piece of any kind of designer series paper, 
five and a quarter by 11 and three quarters, and you're gonna score it at four, seven, 10. And then you can fold it on those folds, whichever way you can do it this way, you could do it this way. You can flip and make your patterns look this way and open from this side, or you can open it from this side. So whatever you wanna do, you can do it. Um, but just make sure you do it. Um, make a card, make one of these cards. Use up some of that pretty designer series paper. Mix and match your stamps and your dies. See what you can come up with. Look at these little bees, they're so cute. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to um, leave me a message on the comments on YouTube or the comments on my blog. And you can also text me at 724-323-226. Hey, you could surprise me with a photo of one of these cards that you've made with designer series paper that you have. Thanks for buzzing by, friends.